Welcome to the next little video in my tour of my virtual open studios this year. Uh, this one is my landscape paintings. Now, most of the landscape work I do is around my studio here in North East Fife, and it's a fantastic place. We're right on the shore. There's, uh, there's woods and walks all around here, which I go exploring and painting. But I also spend about a month of the year up in Skye, and a lot of the work which I've got on show reflects those landscapes and coastlines as well. So come on and I'll show you around. So I've got the gallery set up with my landscape paintings now um, and a couple of works laid out in folios and sketchbooks. It is an incredibly bright day, so bright in fact that uh, there's a bit too much uh, sunlight coming in. It would be too too sunny to paint. I've got the shutters down and the big daylight lights on inside because it's actually too bright. But I'm going to show you a bit of the work just now. Um, this is, well this is a painting of my house. I'm going to show you. Um, we're standing in the building here where my studio is. That's my house which is the Miller's Cottage um, as it used to be. And this is the old mill which is our neighbour's house. And the the burn that ran the mill was this little stream which um, is passed over by this tiny old stone bridge and uh, I painted this about a year ago. It's all in watercolour and it's uh, framed in a handmade frame by Artist Surfaces in Glasgow. They do a great job and I recommend them to you. Um, as well as watercolour, I love painting in oils as well. Uh, this is a painting from Sky, a place called Eilorinsey, uh, looking across to Loch Hurn and the mainland of Noidart behind. And this was painted in the gallery, which I rent every year up in a little place called uh, Elan Eerman, and the gallery is called Antalagerig. There's a lot of Gaelic spoken around there. And uh, uh, yeah, there are some dramatic and spectacular sunsets, which are a constant source of inspiration. Just over the hill from Elan Yerman is Ord, and I rent a cottage in Ord almost every year, and that's where I use it as a, as a base for travelling around the, that part of the island and sketching and painting. I'll show you this uh, other lovely... Um, this is the... yeah, just to avoid the glare. This is called uh, Follow the Heron Home, and uh, the title is stolen from a, a wonderful uh, song uh, by, sung by Karin Polwart and by Malinke and it is at um, again at Elan Eerman and you can see the lighthouse there and these this was worked up from sketches done from my kayak as I as I kayaked around the island and these are the herons flying back at night uh, back to their roost on the island okay and <clears throat> Last in this series is this painting of the snows at Ord looking across to the Coolins and you can see the geese coming in through this fiery, fiery sunset. And this is the Ord burn coming out and uh, all these sort of torpid cold waters. Now, I have not seen snow at Ord. I relied on some photographs that a friend sent me. But uh, it's a really colourful painting. It was great fun to produce. One other thing I'd like to show you while I've got you here is my sketchbook. So wildlife, I tend to work almost entirely from life. Um, and there's very little which I produce which has not started off out in the field. But for landscapes, I work more from very quick sketches like this, supplemented by photographs because I'm more interested in capturing the kind of transient light. Now this is uh, the view right out in front of our house here on the beach uh, with people playing and wandering around. Um, this is from the Isle of Mull uh, a couple of years ago. Again this is a journey in Mull. This is a two, two spread page and um, quite often these have little notes about colours and light and things like that. So whenever I'm travelling around um, I take these books with me and they become a kind of visual diary and uh, that's where work starts off from these ideas i'll go back to them and they'll spark ideas for new paintings anyway um i'm going to show you a few more pictures just now but um let's take you around and 
show you a few more of the paintings. And uh, now this one is looking over the Tay from pretty much from the studio across to Errol. And we get really dramatic lighting effects. There's, there's always some sort of atmospheric change and uh, beautiful skies. And you can see this rainbow just striking down across the river. And this is painted in layers of watercolour with quite a lot of um, gouache body colour just in to pick up. And I've got to tell you that rainbows are perhaps one of the hardest things to paint convincingly. Now, remember, all this work is on the website with uh, far better um, uh, illustration of how the work actually looks. This is just a, a phone that I'm using to a very good phone camera, but uh, it doesn't do the paintings full justice. Uh, this is looking across to egg and rum. Um, actually, this is looking across just to rum. <laughs> egg is off to the left. And this is from the south of sky. Uh, again, one of the paintings which I did last year. Uh, this is oil on a very tight weave canvas. And you can see where I've um, painted the sky in, in very wet paint and then used dry brushes to drag down and give the impression of a kind of slight rain pulling down from the cloud. And I'm always looking for different ways of portraying these, um, these dramatic uh, lighting and um, cloud effects. So that's what I've been doing there. And this is much closer to home. This is the, the woods just at the back of the house. Um, the first week in May, the bluebells come out and it is absolutely amazing. The, the whole wood is carpeted in blue. So the first one week, maybe a week and a half of May, they're at their peak. So we're looking forward to that now as soon as, um, as, soon as we get a chance to go for a walk in the woods again. This is, again, uh, at Balmerino, looking down at the shore. This is where the little mill burn runs out into the beach. And this uh, is a beautiful, calm day like today. And you can see I've painted, this is oil on, on a canvas again. I've painted um, kind of scrumbled light, misty colours over the top of the, the detailed painting to give these um, layered effects of mist and uh, atmosphere and you can see there's someone just sat on the rock in the distance contemplating the view so there we go but you can see there's a huge level of um, of detail I'll try and get this in there's a huge level of detail in some of these paintings and again this is close to home uh, this is a watercolor apologies for the glare on this it's a very highly detailed piece of work you can see tons and tons of um, detail in the grass and in the in the trees coming across. So again, look on the website, please, and find this one and you can see it in much better detail. If there's a particular piece that you would like to see um, a bit more of, I can send you a high definition photograph of it. This is the Fairy Pools in Sky, um, painted in my studio gallery at Sky last year. So I'd like to show you some of my folio work um, over here. And these are field studies done in watercolour um, from my travels. And they're very quick renditions of the, um, the landscape to try and catch fleeting light. And this is painted from the Isle of May, uh, looking across the first of Firth of Forth. Um, now, that gives a very quick impression of what the light is like. And quite often I will work on them over the course of a couple of days, I'll go back to the same spot and try and work up detail. Um, now this is on Handa Island up in Sutherland. And I don't think any of these works are actually uh, on the website. They have been um, stored away in this folio for years, but I thought you might like to see them. This is in need of some repair and um, painted on site in Gran Canaria. Let's see if I just come in a bit, you can see the the motorbike there and the, the boat and the shutters and uh, it's a, a very bright um, equatorial light. There's a series of paintings from St Kilda, this one, uh, another one looking, this is Drum on St Kilda, looking across, uh, this is the Hero's House on St Kilda and looking across the bay again towards Drum here and these were painted um, on site when I was staying on the island uh, for a couple of weeks a few years ago 
and uh, yeah here we go that's the village itself painted from up on the hillside it's quite a high level of detail I was actually staying in one of these houses uh, when, while I was there and this is the last one it's one of the cleats where the islanders stored fuel mostly but sometimes bird catching equipment and there are thousands and thousands of these little huts all over the island anyway um, I hope you enjoyed the the little tour of the folio So I've got a few unframed works as well, which are just <laughs> awaiting framing. I wanted to show you these two. Um, there's this one, which is uh, the view down on the beach. And you would have seen the sketch from my sketchbook earlier that referred to this piece. And you can see the atmospherics that I'm working on in there through that tangle of branches and the highlights in yellow. And here there's a fire and a camp on the shore, some people fishing. Uh, somebody walking their dogs and the kids have built a little kind of uh, teepee shelter there at the edge of the burn. This is an oil painting painted on canvas, on a canvas board. And uh, yeah, I'm waiting for the, the right frame to be built for it to, uh, to, to get it finished up. And this is Loch Karushk up in sky. And again, it's awaiting uh, a good frame for it. Um, again, on a canvas board. Uh, painted with quite a high degree of detail and a lot of atmospheric mist as the the uh, the moisture evaporates off the loch in a hot highland afternoon. I've got uh, one other piece which is unframed I want to show you over here and again it's one from Sky and this is uh, a summer's day in Ord looking across this long panorama painting. Now it actually was in another frame which I've borrowed for something else uh, which is away at exhibition uh, and uh, yeah I'm waiting for that to, to come back but uh, any of the works can be framed, uh, reframed or unframed. Uh, this one is uh, Nist Point up in sky and again a, a beautiful sunset evening which was the inspiration for this painting. Uh, a lot of uh, purple and reds in the sky reflected in the water and then I've uh, contrasted that with this, this blue patch of sky which melds into the, the yellow sunset and um, that was really quite tricky to do um, and contrast that oil painting with this very detailed crisp and precise watercolour again sorry for the glare on this but this is the old chestnut tree up in the ruined abbey in the village here where I live and you can see the struts that hold the, this old tree up the, the tree itself is about, it's, I think it's the second oldest tree in Scotland it is about 500 years old and is uh, incredibly incredibly um, interesting to, to look at it it's almost a human figure um, it's almost like painting a portrait painting this tree and that brings me to another local painting. This is, oh, get a glare on this. Um, it's the problem with filming on a summer afternoon. Uh, the, uh, you can see this is the end of the lane up in um, Kirkton of Balmerino, just up the hill here. And the old uh, telephone box is, uh, it is protected. It was, uh, it was planned to be removed, but it was uh, used as a, um, a navigation aid by the Coast Guard and they objected to its removal. So this is watercolour uh, on a very heavy Cox paper and you can see I've framed it with this deckled edge and I really like the way that that, that looks um, with this uh, very evocative textured piece of work. That brings me to this painting as well which is again along the shore here. Um, same technique, same um, Cox paper, same deckled edge framing, and you can see the uh, the cormorants on the, the point there, uh, just hauled out to dry as the sun's setting. They, they they sit there with their wings out, drying off. There's a there a series of uh, big winter storms this year. Lots of driftwood washed up on the shore, and that tangle of driftwood and debris just looked really interesting from an artistic point of view. So you can see how I've adapted it in this painting. And lastly, uh, this is a watercolour on tinted paper off the little path down onto the beach. 
and you can see the board that um, people appear across. It washes out at almost every high tide and then someone will come along, uh, a few kids will come down and they'll build a new little bridge across the, the stream. And uh, let me show you a few of my, my framed landscape prints. I've got these in a couple of sizes. Um, these are the works framed on the um, on the website. The, all the work is advertised as unframed, but uh, if you need a frame, please get in touch. I've got a very limited um, choice, but they do suit the work very well. And these are works um, which are you know have, have been exhibited and sold uh, several years ago, but uh, they're updated continually with with new work. Well, that's it for now. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the tour of the exhibition. I've really enjoyed speaking to you about the work and the processes behind it. Uh, please get in touch if you'd like to talk about any of the paintings. Um, there's lots of prints on my website as well. You can follow the links and find those. Any of the original work that you would like as a print, please get in touch. I can, of course, always arrange that. So um, I look forward to hearing from you. And remember also my Etsy store, which has cards, greetings cards, books and calendars. And again, you can follow the links to, to find those. So um, check out two of the other videos of this exhibition, which follow my wildlife paintings and my narrative work, and also my folios of unframed work. So check those out through my YouTube and Vimeo channels, and you can find them through the exhibitions page of my website. So that's it for, for now. Um, please have a look at the other stuff online and I'll catch up with you soon. Bye now.